104 runs. They need to let some brothers play some cricket. I lost money on that. We'll show you some stuff. NBA Finals Game 1, Pascal Siakam. Wasn't quite so OBJ. Good. Nice touch pass to Kawhi for the layup. I'm just, I wanted to see who was getting back in defense there. So that is, so there's an instance where Siakam shows an element of his game that shocked me. Siakam did see, read the, read the cut, mid-air touch pass when he is on fire offensively. You would think he's going to take it and go straight up with it. There's what no defense play. for this, Nick. That was after a mate. I know. They were getting out and running all the time. More Siakam, this time on defense with perfect timing to block Draymond's shot off the back. Nick, you were up on Siakam throughout the season, special season, especially as a defensive player. Mm -hmm. I love the comparison. If Toronto had more postseason success, we could talk about him developing a lot like Kawhi. Well, keep in mind, they drafted him thinking they're going to have to go through LeBron every year. So they drafted him and the kid OG as guys that could guard LeBron in playoff series. Yeah, and there were people high on him last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were high. They were smoking something yeah. to he was going to stop LeBron. <laughs> we got it. More from the finals now. Raptors beating the Warriors 118-109. First time the Warriors have lost game one of the finals under Steve Kerr. No Kevin Durant in this one, but Boogie Cousins did come off the bench. Gave you eight minutes, three points. Steph and Clay combined for 55 points. Wasn't enough, though. As the Raptors built a halftime lead, they would never relinquish. Still, Clay Thompson is sure that Golden State will bounce back. We're not very familiar with this team, but that's no excuse. You know, it's still a... Uh... So we got to come out here, and our goal was to get one, and it's still on the table for us. So I know we'll respond like the champions we are. All right, Nick, how do you expect them to bounce back in game two? Well, I expect them to come back and win game two, if for no other reason than I've never seen them go down 2-0 in a series. We've seen them go down 3-1. That series, they split 1-1. One one. We've seen them lose a series to Cleveland. That series, they were up 2-0. We've seen them go down 3-2 in a series against Houston. That series, it was 1-1. One one. And that was the only other series they've played where they started on the road. The, the Warriors losing two games to start an NBA Finals would put them in such unfamiliar territory. The last three years, they were up 2-0 instead of being not down 0-2, up 2-0. First three, two games of the NBA Finals. But what do they have to do differently? A lot of it is what we saw in those highlights, what Chris pointed out. It's one thing to allow transition buckets off a long a long miss. Steph shoots a three, yeah. a long, long rebound out, and all of a sudden you got a three on two. To allow transition buckets after a make shows that you were not ready for the intensity of the moment of the NBA Finals, which is a, a little inexplicable given the fact that that your team's played in nothing but NBA Finals. Like everyone out there's played in these NBA Finals for your team, for the guys on the other roster. The last time any of them played in NBA Finals was Danny Green and Kawhi Leonard five seasons ago. So I expect the Warriors to bounce back in game two. I expect them to have a similar game plan for Kawhi Leonard. Now, if Pascal Siakam all of a sudden is going to be the, the second best player in the series, then that could change some math for Golden State. But I expect Golden State to, at the very least, even if you don't think they're going to win game two, to come out with a better intensity on both sides of the ball than they showed last night. Does the approach change as far as Steve Kerr does what he does with adjustments, having seen what Pascal Siakam does? Do they do they guard Kawhi differently? They managed to hold him in check last night? Well, this is the thing. We haven't talked about Golden State making adjustments because they've been so dominant. But in that dominance, yes, they do make adjustments. They will be more sound on their rotations defensively. But there are certain things that they shouldn't be surprised about because Nick Nurse surprised everyone as far as the pace of the game, them getting the ball out. So I expect them, you're not going to be able to throw the ball over their head. And they did that several times for easy looks or that was converted to an easy look by a Raptor. So I expect them to do that. But Mark Gasol, Siakam, I don't expect him to get 32 again. But Mark Gasol in his last three games against the Warriors when he was with Memphis, he, he, he averaged 27-9, shot 52% from the field, 62% from three. So he has had some success going against the Warriors. So yes, the Warriors will make some type of adjustment. Do we expect Kawhi to just have a normal game again, him and Kyle Lowry? So they will be on the attack in game number two. So the biggest concern for me is not the adjustments. It's not Steve Kerr. He will have them buttoned up. I don't think it was the intensity. I just think basketball is a game that is better off played on a regular basis. The nine days off, we have seen 
series year after year, it hurts the team with the layoff. You get into a rhythm, and that was the advantage Toronto had. The atmosphere was second to none, but can they? Andre Iguodala, can they substitute those men? What if they're missing him? If he's the primary defender on Kawhi, Alfonso McKinney, how many minutes does he have to play? Is he offensive enough? What type of rotation are they going to have? So I believe they'll make those adjustments. My thing is Andre Iguodala, that injury to him, what will adjustments they have to make with those minutes if he's potentially either hurt for a long period of time or if he's limited, do they bring him off the bench and have someone else start the game? And it really does appear now that we have a few weeks window to look back that they used the, the bit of gas Andre had left, they used against Houston. And they needed every last bit of gas against Houston. They needed his defense. In game six, he hit five three-pointers. He has not made a three-pointer since game six against the Houston Rockets. Those shots are coming up short, which usually means your legs are not exactly where you want them to be. And if Iggy is limited or not playing C, now all of a sudden, you're running out of people. You're, you're, you're oh, yeah. running out of people, you're running out of playmakers. Then it is that Alfonso McKinney, who three years ago this week was playing in the secondary league in Luxembourg, is a NBA Finals starter. He like, might be starting Sunday night. Right, I mean, I think you think he will be starting Sunday night. I mean, Iggy, it didn't look good. His calf, he strained it again. And let's not forget, not only the nine days off, but... He missed part of game three, missed all of game number four. Like he's been resting to not be able to finish that game when he tried to explode because in round number two, I was bragging about Andre Iguodala. Man, he's leading the playoff in dunks. Right. Man, the explosiveness, and you mentioned it. He, he, we might have got all that he had getting out of that Houston series. Is there a chance that... Perhaps because of what happened last night, you rush Clay back, you try to get Boogie back in. Does a guy like Clay have to step up and be the guy now and give you more than 21? So there, I don't think they're going to rush Durant back. I think that is one that they will see. Durant's not going to play in game two. I mean, I feel like we know Durant's not playing in game two. We'll see what happens in Regardless game two. Regardless of whatever happens with Iggy. That I, I don't think you can. Does Steve Kerr's been adamant about what the process okay. is. And by the way, Kevin Durant is also, the, the calf is, is connected, if I'm not mistaken, to the Achilles, and he is about to be a free agent. And, the, and this is super in high level intensity. You can't tell Kevin Durant, go out there at 50%. So like, right, I mean, this is something no where doubt. that could lead, to, right now he has a significant-ish injury. You can't rush him back and have it be a career-altering injury, which a popped Achilles can right. be. But the last name you mentioned is the name that, to me, is the most noteworthy for game number two. Clay Thompson now. Clay Thompson, we've said before on this show, he's got the best deal in sports. He gets a max contract. When he plays great, we all talk about, man, if Clay had his own team, look at what he would be. And when he doesn't play great, we talk about other guys. We do. Clay, what? It's right, amazing. I mean, it's, it's the greatest deal in sports. Like, I feel like <laughs> there's part of Kevin Durant that wishes he got to be that guy. Like, I get all the money. I, when I'm awesome, I'm awesome. When I'm not, nobody cares. Clay wasn't bad yesterday, but. He has to put his impact on the game, and Toronto recognized what I'm surprised more people haven't recognized over this Warriors run. Clay Thompson cannot dribble. He can't dribble. Not well. I mean, he can't dribble without his head being down. There was the play where he had the dunk. He took seven steps because he didn't want to dribble. They started picking him up full court when he had the ball. He did, he, you said it before the show. It looked like a... I don't want to be disrespectful, but it looked like a junior high team that's not dealing with a press well, where it's like, oh man, I got to just dribble to the sideline and try to throw it to somebody. Clay's got to be great. When Kevin Durant's not out there, Clay and Steph have to be 2015, 2016 Splash Brothers, where they're both a threat for 35, not just Steph. I'm going to throw Draymond in there also. He's got to be far more aggressive. Now, they were way up on the scheme. They weren't like Portland. Portland, the pick and roll to Steph, they laid off of Steph. Steph killed him in game number one, game number two. They allowed Draymond to run out. Nick Nurse and his coaching staff, they were up. They were trapping Steph, and they were out to get in front of Draymond so that he couldn't initiate that break. But Clay, man, Clay, you got to be super. Like you talking about a max deal? You talking about last week? You were last week you were sucking your teeth because you weren't on the All NBA team. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, this is your time, bro. You got all these guys hurt. It's your time, and we just give Clay a pass like no other great player. Second greatest shooter we might have seen in the history of the game. Man, he gets an easy pass. And last night, no, he was not bad. 
but he was not super when they needed him to be. First question I asked you when you walked in this morning, I said, do you think they would have won if Kevin Durant was on the court? We're going to talk about that next on First Things First. Stay with us. I was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs>